And right now we present to you the United Music Group from Urshan College. We're so glad that they are here. Would you make them feel welcome here at East Wind Pentecostal? God bless you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many know we serve a miracle-working God? A healing God. A God that makes a way when there seems to be no way. The Bible says that the Lord is the Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And since God is here in this place, we have liberty right now. And even if you don't feel it, even if you don't see it, you can respond in faith and believe that it's going to happen. This is going to be more than just some concert. We have seen miraculous healings on this tour. We have seen deliverances. We have seen people return to the altar that haven't been there in years. And we believe that that's going to happen here in this place tonight. So would you stand with us? And would you begin to praise the name of the Lord? Would you begin to speak it out in faith? Even if you don't see it yet, will you begin to speak it? Will you begin to dance like you've already got the victory? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We believe you for it, God. Thank you, Jesus.
to praise I shake off despair as I think I'm turning Hoping to regress I will dance out in it I will crush disappointment and break every chain All of my fear I will hey, turn I'm gonna into turn it into shake off despair as I sing Anything is possible in your name. I bless you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I'm so glad to be here with you guys. This is an incredible presence of God I already feel. And I love being in the presence of God, being able to worship with you guys. This is such a blessing. You can be seated for a few moments. I'm not going to be very long, but I just want to share something that's on my heart before we go into this next song. When I was a younger girl, uh, some of this may connect with some of you because I know you guys have a Bible quizzing team here that I know is really good. I love Bible quizzing, but I was a Bible quizzer as a young girl. And um, in one of those times where I would study and Bible quizzing is just you memorize scriptures and you go to tournaments and you quiz over them. And so I was just in my room, you know, doing my just basic routine of learning the scriptures and then quoting through and referencing all my cards. And as I was doing it, it was doctrine that year. And I wasn't, there was nothing specific uh, about these verses. I had heard them my entire life. I was, I was raised in the church, so I had heard them in Sunday school class and, you know, all the time. But it, and so I was kind of just quoting them just out of, you know, repetition and just normal. And all of a sudden, I got to a point in the deck of cards where it was one in scripture, one after another, after another, and it, it didn't stop. It just kept going. And, and I'd be like, okay, what about this? Like I was asking questions in my head. And then the next verse would answer that question. And then the next verse would answer that question. And it was just such a, it was a God moment. Because I was like, that's not just a coincidence that that's happening. This is God telling me something here. And as I began to reflect on those scriptures and what that meant, this full revelation of who God was just came to me in my bedroom. And I was so just like in awe of what was going on. I, I was like, I get it. I know what this means now. It was just like a, a switch flipped in my brain and I was like, I get this. And all of a sudden, I just saw God in this whole other light and I was so overwhelmed. I was just like in all of what was happening in that room and I just got so lost in the presence of God. I was buried in my bed just face down sobbing because I didn't even feel worthy to be even in his presence. He was just so big and so holy and I, I just, I couldn't even believe that a God I'd served my entire life, I was just now somehow realizing 
how big he is and how incredible and mighty he is. And there was still so much more that I didn't know. I, I was so curious to know even more about him. I wasn't, there was, I just had scratched the surface. There's so much more to God that I didn't even realize. And even as I'm getting older, I'm realizing I'm learning and I'm getting more testimonies, but there's still so much to God that I don't even know yet. And that's so encouraging. There's so many things in this world that are offered, but you know, eventually we'll just kind of get boring. You know, you tried it all, you've done it all. And it just gets boring. It's not filling anything. There's so much to God that doesn't end. It just keeps going and keeps getting bigger. Your cup overflows. It doesn't just fill, it overflows. There's even more and even more. And he just keeps pouring out. That's such an encouraging thing. And what I didn't tell you was in this moment that I was sitting there doing that, previously before I had even opened those scriptures, I was struggling with a lot of different things in my mind. I, I had recently, my parents had just divorced, and so I was just trying to figure out, what does that look like for me? I don't even know if we're gonna have money the next day to eat food. I don't know, now I have to switch to a school. I don't know how that's gonna affect my relationship with my dad, he's in a different state now. When am I gonna see him? There were so many different scenarios in my head I was so worried about. But when I felt the presence of God, and when I read those scriptures, immediately there was peace, and immediately there was joy in my heart and I was just so lost I didn't even have time to think about my issues because I was so consumed with the presence of God and as I was up there I I wanted I was kind of curious what the full definition of peace was and so I googled it and it says freedom from disturbance tranquility and I think sometimes we get we get a little confused when we worship and stuff and we're I believe there's so much faith that God can do something. We just sang about it, that anything is possible. And we truly believe that. But for some reason, we feel like the only time we can have true peace is when God fixes our problems and we don't have to worry about it any longer. But my problems weren't fixed when I felt that peace. It wasn't like my parents just all of a sudden got back together or all of a sudden God just dumped a bunch of cash in my lap and was like, here you go, that'd have been nice. But that didn't happen. My problems weren't fixed, but somehow I felt freedom from disturbance in my mind. I felt freedom and liberty to just worship God and not even worry about my issues. And so as we go into this next song, I don't know what problems you're facing. I recognize there are real problems in this place. There are real issues and things that have been burdening you and holding you down and you're battling. There's, there's addictions and struggles that are happening in your life. I recognize that. But as we lift up our hands and worship and go into this next song, I invite you, worship God with just an awe of who he is, not with an agenda to fix your problem, not with a motive that, God, if I lift my hands, then you're gonna fix my problem, you're gonna help me. Worship him because he's God. Worship him because he's the creator of the universe. He's your king of kings and Lord of lords. He has all power in heaven and earth. That's enough to worship him. He deserves our praise. He is a great God. And when we do that, that is when true peace can come. That is when true healing and miracles and divine things in the spirit, supernatural events can happen in this place. And we believe in those events, but I'm saying now is the time to create that atmosphere. As you worship, let it be genuine. Let it be for a God that is just so big and deserves it. Not if he's done anything for me, just because he deserves it. Invi I invite you, as I do that, please join with me as we go into this next song.
restored, that you would restore to me the joy of my salvation. God, I pray that when I look at you, that I would see your glory, that I would see your power and your might, that I would see your sovereignty. You might not have known that last song, but I know that you know this chorus. It goes like this. Show us your glory. 
Show us your glory In wonder and surrender we fall down God, show us your glory Show us your glory Let every burning heart be holy ground Show us your glory Show us your glory In wonder and, In wonder and surrender we fall God, show mighty God we serve. We're going to worship the Lord right now with our giving. Our ushers are going to come. Why don't we just bow our heads one more time and ask the Lord to bless this as we receive this offering as part of our worship and the way that we can glorify God. How many of you found God is a faithful God? He's our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We worship Him with our giving. Let's pray. Lord, we're so thankful to be in your house tonight. 
thankful for the opportunity to worship you with our giving. We pray, Lord, that you would bless it and multiply it for the purpose intended. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you as you give. Praise the Lord, church. We are so thankful to be here with you in this place. There is such an awesome presence of God here tonight. God's wanting to do something in this house. He's wanting to touch some people tonight. You can just feel it in the atmosphere. Before we go on, I just want to take a moment to kind of introduce us. If you haven't heard, we're from Urshan College. We're centered in Wentzville, Missouri. And I just want to take a moment and introduce you to all of my friends. We're going to start down here with somebody that you're pretty familiar with. Um, whenever we introduce ourselves, everybody usually feels like they have to clap and cheer. And just so we can save time, we're going to do it the Urshan way. And all you have to do is when somebody says their name and where they're from, just clap once. That way it makes it easy and we don't have to take forever. So go ahead. My name is Ethan Elms. I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. My name is Bethany McClintock. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. My name is Alyssa Whitman. I'm from Billings, Montana. My name is Nathan Long, and I'm from Benton Harbor, Michigan. My name is Braylon Soto, and I'm from Appleton, Wisconsin. My name is Christina Kellogg, and I'm from Orange County, California. My name is Hannah Reeder. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. My name is Andres Garcia. I'm from Appleton, Wisconsin. My name is Sammy Gunn. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. Hi, everyone. My name is Ash McManus. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Hello, I'm Stormy, and I'm from St. Louis. My name is Mason Downs. I'm from North Little Rock, Arkansas. My name is Laura Payne. I'm a missionary kid, so I don't know where I'm from, but I'm so glad to be back here in Palm Bay. I love you all. My name is Blake, and I'm from Columbia, Mississippi. We're just going to say that she's from planet Earth. My name is Harmon Bilyeu, and I'm from Gillette, Wyoming. And my name is Katie Simmons. I'm from Donovan, Missouri. And so our college is a Christian liberal arts college. We offer several different degrees. A lot of people think that we only offer theological degrees or music degrees, but that's not true. We do offer those, but we also offer counseling-based degrees and human services. We offer organizational leadership and business degrees, and we offer like a, an associates of general studies, and we also have several master's degrees. And if you really don't wanna leave Florida, you can do it all online. And so, if you have any questions or you want to know more about our school, we have a booth right out here in the lobby. We would love to talk to you just to get to know you. You know all of our names. We want to know yours. We want to connect with you. We have some merch for sale. We have t-shirts, pins. We have our newest album called Take Your Place. It has a lot of the songs that we're singing tonight. And it, oh yes, it's being digitally released tonight at midnight, in Jesus' name. And so go ahead and check that out. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, all of the different outlets. Um, but once again, we're just so happy to be here with you. And just feel free to worship tonight. You don't have to do anything weird. We're just here to be in the presence of God with you. We just want to worship him with you. So take your liberty tonight. Praise God. I already introduced myself, but my name's Mason, and man, it feels awesome in this house tonight. I can feel it all the way back there on the keys. It feels good. But man, this, this group and this tour and being able to do this and glorify God in the process, it's just, it's such an honor, such a privilege for me. So thank you all for having us. And, I, I really just wanted to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. And if you'll allow it, uh, I just want to spend a few minutes and share something that I feel like God's been laying on my heart. I pushed the button. Not supposed to do that. Got it. One of the cool things that I've gotten to do on this tour is horseback riding in Memphis. And man, I rode a horse named Tanner. And that dude, he shared the same, like, fiery spirit that I start feeling when I'm on the keys back there and we get to, we get to jump in a little bit. This dude was wanting to take off. He was always wanting to go. And we had a fun time. 
but he had a specific way I had to talk to him to get the horse to trust me. And I thought it was really cool to think about the horse is the one that is, that is walking, that is being led, but he's doing the work of the one who's riding him. And it's an interesting relationship because you're having to guide an animal who has kind of a weird arrangement of limbs over fallen tree branches and up rocky slopes and through places that he might not walk on his own accord. If he was just going to decide to take a stroll on any given Saturday, he might not want to walk up this big rocky hill around some trees. But I started to get his trust and he, he trusted me to act in his best interest, to guide him in places that would be navigate or that he was able to navigate. And it reminds me of a time in my life when, let's just be honest, we've, we've all been in, in a place where we feel like we're losing a battle, where we maybe feel a little bit lost or like we're walking in circles with no direction, like our life's not serving any purpose. And like we're just losing, losing in life. It's, it's somewhat common of a place in the human experience. But the next song we're gonna sing talks about the battle belonging to God. And I had reached what I would consider the lowest point in my life during my first year of college before I came to Urshan and before God got a hold of me and shook me out of all the dumb stuff that I was living in. I was living life for myself. I was leading myself. I was trying to make means, meet, ends meet on my own and I was losing. But there's one thing about when we sing, this is how I fight my battles and God, the battle belongs to you. Those words began to resonate in my heart. And if we really think about it, if the battle belongs to God, then why are we asking him to fight our battles rather than trusting him and fighting his battles for his kingdom? Because if the battle belongs to him, I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to put on, if my life is going to live up to expectations of this world. I don't have to drown in the cares of this world anymore because it's his battle. It's his kingdom. And I find faith in that. I find encouragement in knowing that the struggles that I face are just temporary things. They don't matter in the long run. So I wanna encourage someone tonight as we sing the battle belongs to God to let go of whatever weight is hindering you from dancing freely in his presence, from whatever is hindering you from walking in God-given purpose. Just lift your eyes to his battle, to his kingdom, and he'll walk you through it. He'll walk you through those places that you don't know how to get through. In Jesus' name, somebody be encouraged tonight.
Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. Oh. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see, when all I see is the cross, God, you see. song I have a little bit of a testimony to share with you all if you would like to be seated you may keep standing but you know it's okay anyways um so this is the first time I'm publicly sharing this so I'm a little nervous but growing up I I had a really good childhood I nothing really bad happened for me I mean my parents were always there for me and I became really really close with my siblings I I mean, they are, they are the world to me. <laughs> so when I had to leave my family, I mean, I said I'm from California. Moving to Missouri was a big deal for me. I, I had to leave them and be on my own for a change. It was, it was hard, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but my first semester, it, it ended up being really well. I got through it and I got to go home for winter break and I saw my family again, woo! But second semester was, it was a little different. Um, <laughs> at the beginning of second semester, I got a text from my mom. He said, Christina, it's not really looking really good right now. Your sister, she's in, she's in good, big trouble. <laughs> she's, she's dealing with a lot right now. 
and I didn't know what that meant. I had no idea what she was talking about. I was like, I just was home. I, I just was with her. What do you mean? And I just got so confused. My mom told me that my sister got in with the wrong crowd. <laughs> she got involved in a lot of things she shouldn't have. And her, her mental health was not <laughs> on the best place. She was, she was really struggling. Sorry. And it was just so hard for me to hear. I never felt so broken. I, my heart shattered and I remember just sitting in my room, sobbing and questioning, God, why would you let this happen? Why would you let my sister go through so much pain? Why would I be all the way here and she be dealing with so much when I can't even be there to be with her? It was just, it was the worst confusion, pain I have ever felt. With that, so much doubt began to crawl in my mind. Like, God, are you even fighting my battles? God, are, are you with me? How can I get through this? And every day I would pray, God, help my sister, help my sister. And it seemed like nothing was working. It seemed like nothing was changing. I would call my sister and she just would still be struggling and I just couldn't see an end. But then I began to realize, I have to put my trust in him. Yes. I can't doubt what he's doing. He turns our pain and our suffering for good. He does not leave us in our pain. So as soon as I realized that he is working for my good, I knew that I could trust him. I knew that the victory is in hand. There's nothing too hard for him. He has everything in control. In fact, let me tell you, today I, I keep account with my sister because it's so victorious. I, I celebrate every day. Today is 102 days since she's tried anything harmful to her body. God is a wonder working God. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. When we think that our darkness is all around us, He is our light. He never leaves us. Oh, Jesus, you're so good. Thank you, Jesus. This next song, one of my favorite lyrics, it says, I know your way is higher than the heavens. His plan is greater. His plan is higher. He knows the victory is in hand. And then it says, I lift my praises higher than the heavens. Yes. When you openly admit that he is greater and that he can take your situation and turn it for good, he can do anything. Yes. He can do anything. Yes, so I'm here to tell you tonight, no matter what you're facing, he can change it for good. He can change it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you come and mend hearts tonight. Show them the deliverance power that is in this room. Oh, you're so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
won't you raise your hands and begin to declare it unto him right now lord i know you're still working i know your ways are above my ways i know you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all i can ask or think jesus i believe in your name god hallelujah thank you jesus our hands continue worshiping the Lord right now I don't feel at liberty to move on just yet God has wanted to do something here in someone's life God has wanted to take you a place that you have never been before some of you have been battling something some of you have been facing certain things in your life that have made you question what God is trying to do that have made you question the why am I even here it has made you question God what do you even love me do you even know who I am what I come to tell you tonight that God is one to remind you that you have a place in the kingdom that he is still with you and that he will never leave you and that he will never forsake you hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that our minds, Lord Jesus, will be opened up to what you want to do, God. I pray right now, Jesus, that you remind us, Lord, who we are, oh God. I pray that someone will be delivered, Lord Jesus, from depression, Lord. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that God remind them who you are in you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your voices. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's faith in this house tonight. Sweet, sweet presence of the Lord. I wanted to share a little bit of my testimony. Maybe seated. When I was a kid, I grew up in a, I was in a nice home. I had loving parents. I never knew my biological father, however. He was a missionary to the Philippines. And my mom started a church there. Then I was born, but Three days later, he passed away of colon cancer. My mother didn't know what to do. But God opened up doors and allowed us to be able to go. And we lived in Wyoming. And I've grown up there all my life. And the father I've always known was my stepfather whom I've loved dearly. And growing up, I faced a lot of mental battles, I faced a lot of depression, anxiety. Time after time, I would question who I was. I would question that God, do you even love me? Because I can't even love myself. See, I hated the people around me. I hated everyone for no reason. At least that's what I thought I did. I thought I just hated people because they were annoying, because they didn't do things I didn't like. But deep down, it's because I had a hatred for myself. I didn't like who I was. I didn't like the way I looked. I didn't like the way I talked. I didn't like the, anything about me. I hated who I was. Depression and anxiety, thoughts and attempts of suicide crept into my life. For years and years, I have faced the same mental battles. I have faced the same struggles over and over and over again. In 
that God finally delivered me from those things. Over in September of 2019, this was my freshman year at Edition College. Not even a month into the school year, I received a phone call from my pastor. I heard my mom on the line and she was just weeping, she was crying and she was telling me, everything's gonna be okay, just be strong, okay? Hey, just, you just need to be strong, okay? And I wasn't sure what was going on. My mom didn't elaborate. And my pastor was on the phone. And he told me, Harmon, I've got some bad news for you. Your father passed away of a heart attack. I was so shocked that I didn't process what was spoken at first. But eventually I just felt like this sense of loss, this deep sense of loss come upon me. And then all of a sudden I felt all of those same things that I have faced growing up come back into my life. I felt the depression come back. I felt the anxiety of God, what am I going to do? I just lost my father. I lost a man who I looked up to. And now I'm here at Russian College. I don't even have a father figure. I felt the same suicidal thoughts that I faced back then creep back into my life. I didn't understand why. I didn't understand why God would allow this to happen in my life. Not just for me, but my mother lost not just one, but she lost two husbands that she loved so dearly. And it broke my heart. I don't understand. Why God will allow this situation to happen again to my own mother? I don't understand why he will allow this to happen in my life. And as I began to face these things again during my freshman year, I allowed myself to turn my eyes away from what was really important. I allowed myself to turn my eyes away from what God called me to be. I would allow myself to get caught up just, like there's nothing wrong with hanging out with people, but I would get so caught up just trying to be around people and trying to please them because I didn't look, I saw myself in my brokenness and I thought, It's all right if I just make everyone else happy. If I'm happy, I allowed myself to think that if I can make other people happy, then I can be happy as well. During the live recording, the week of, and we were prepping, when we were practicing, getting everything settled down, we were having the practice with the chorale and we started singing only name. And I remember in that practice that God just broke me. That when we were singing only name, I just felt God just press upon me. And I remember him telling me, I remember him telling me that You've allowed yourself to be distracted for so long that you've turned your eyes away from me. That I cannot do something in you unless you decide to turn to me. You've been facing this battle for so long because you've allowed yourself. You've been, you have not been dealing with this pain. That You have not given this pain up to me. I want to take your pain. I want to take your brokenness. I don't want to make it something new. But you've allowed yourself to turn away. You've allowed yourself to turn your eyes to something, to the things that don't even matter. And I remember in that moment, I just wept. That all of a sudden, I felt all the power and all of that pain just begin to just heal. I felt the healing presence just begin to come upon me in my heart. That God allowed, even though I may not have a father in this world, I still have a heavenly father who looks out for me. That even in my situation, there is still a God who is looking out for me. That in 
as long as I turn my eyes to him, that everything's going to be okay. That even though that there's things going on in my life, there may be situations in your life that you're facing. Some of you have also been facing battles as well. You've been fighting the same battles over and over and over again. And you have come to a place where you feel like you can't go on any further. But I've come to tell you today that if you just look to Jesus, if you just look full into his face and say, God, here I am. God, I'm broken. I don't know what to do anymore. I'm confused. I'm hurt. I'm broken. I don't have the strength to continue. But if you just look to him, if you just turn your eyes to Jesus, that he's going to give you the strength that you need to get back up again. He is going to give you the strength to continue pushing forward. If you're facing a situation right now and you don't know what to do, these altars are open and I urge you to come up front as we sing this next song.
respond or will you let him walk past? Will you reach out and touch the hem of his garment? Or will you let your miracle walk right by you? These altars are open. Bring your pain. Bring your hurt. Bring the need that you have before the God. He will restore. He will heal. Respond in faith right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you would lose faith in this place, God. I pray that there would be miraculous healing, Jesus. I pray that the anointing would fall. I pray that calling would be answered today, God. In Jesus' name, break every chain in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the light of His glory and grace, there is freedom, healing, filling His place. In the light of His glory and grace, there is freedom, healing, filling His place. In the light of His glory. 
This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. 